Hello everyone, uh, I'm Dr. Sara Taysir. I'm a pediatric specialist and healthcare consultant on MedSynapse Medical Platform. Today, I'm very, very pleased to have uh, Dr. Alejandra Guerrero with us uh, on uh, podcast uh, on MedSynapse podcast. So first of all, Dr. Alejandra, uh, we're very happy to have you and we would like to know more about your medical background. Thank you so much, Dr. Sara, for inviting me. I'm a specialist neurologist. Currently, I'm working in Dubai at American Hospital. And uh, I have, um, I'm a senior fellow for equity in brain health for the Global Brain Health Institute okay. from Trinity College in Dublin and UCSF. And I also hold a master's degree in public health. My main interest is Alzheimer's disease and related dementias and also all the lifestyle measures that we can take to address the different neurological disorders. Okay, well, great experience. So uh, today we're going to talk about a very interesting topic, which is uh, the brain and prevention of uh, uh, Alzheimer's disease. So first of all, I would like to have a brief introduction about what is Alzheimer's disease. Can you just explain to us and to the audience exactly what is this disease? Okay, so Alzheimer's disease is a progressive neurodegenerative disorder okay. and it primarily affects the brain and affects some cognitive functions like memory is the one that we all know about yeah. but it also affects other abilities of the brains like thinking behavior language problems also and sometimes these to spatial problems yeah. so what are some uh, common misconceptions people have about alzheimer's as you know and many of us can experience or can have a case in his family having Alzheimer, but we don't really know. We assume some uh, symptoms that uh, this person could have. So there are a lot of misconceptions about this disease. Can you just elaborate more about this part? Yeah, so the most common misconception is that this is a normal part of aging. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's losing your memory, it's normal. And usually that's what we see every day. People, they're like, okay, he's getting old, or I'm yeah. getting old, so it's normal that I lose my memory. But this is not normal at all. Okay. We can have some memory changes with aging, mm -hmm. but these memory changes are not that severe to interfere with daily life. Okay. and they don't progress over time. Mm -hmm. Memory problems that progress over time and start having some impact on daily life, those are symptoms of Alzheimer's disease, and that's not normal. Yes, this is very important. So in your point of view, what are the most effective lifestyle changes people can make to promote the brain health? So the changes that we all need to do, this needs to be in a life course approach. Mm -hmm. So it's only when you are old and you start like, oh, I'm afraid of <laughs> having Alzheimer's, now I'm going to do something. No, this starts since day zero, actually since conception, mm -hmm. because the nutrition of the mother, for example, at that part is super <laughs> important. Now when the baby is born, all the correct nutrition, all the education that we give to children, yeah. now in adult age, having a healthy lifestyle. Mm -hmm. What's a healthy lifestyle? Doing regular physical activity, yeah. avoiding consumption of substances like alcohol or mm -hmm. tobacco, and having, I, I always tell my patients, being happy. So yeah. being happy yeah, means so having the stress, having a purpose in life, yes. and having social connections. Mm -hmm. This is very important. Yeah. And honestly, this is important what you mentioned, that we should start taking care of our brain health since we are too young, since I am, <laughs> since the mothers should take care of their baby's health and they are in their tummy and they are pregnant with their baby. So this is very important that we start early. So when we grow up, uh, this healthy lifestyle that we had during our childhood will uh, positively directly affect our uh, brain health uh, when we get old. Yes. Yes. So brain health is... Brain health is cumulative, mm -hmm. so the changes and the things that we start doing from childhood, then in teenagers, like during mid age, yeah. during old age, everything accumulates. So if we do all these good things since the beginning, our brain will be healthy and stronger. Okay, so uh, what specific food do you recommend uh, or dietary patterns that would help uh, in promotion of our brain health? 
and consecutively so, reduce the Alzheimer's disease, of course. So the diet that it's the best for the brain or the one that has evidence, it's called the mind diet, okay. which is a combination of the brain diet, which is a diet that it's focused to um, treat hypertension or high blood mm -hmm. pressure. In that we promote the consumption of vegetables, mm -hmm. especially green vegetables. Also the consumption of berry. The famous one are the blueberries. They are super good for the brain. Mm -hmm. Also the consumption of fatty fish, which are rich in omega-3, yeah. like salmon, tuna, mm -hmm. mackerel, the mm -hmm. consumption of nuts, mm -hmm. whole grains, and olive oil and avocado. Okay, so we should include these types of food during uh, our daily diet, our daily uh, nutrition plan, right? Yes. Okay, so uh, what, when should someone be concerned about uh, their memory problems and, and, and they should uh, immediately seek medical advice? Okay, so as we said at the beginning, any memory loss that interferes with daily life activities, that interferes with job, for example, it's a red flag. Okay. Or symptoms that are progressive on, in time. Mm -hmm. Difficulty planning or solving problems, mm -hmm. having confusion with time, having trouble understanding visual images or special relationship, okay. misplacing items and losing the ability to recall. Because usually what happens is we misplace the keys, <laughs> the glasses. <laughs> and after one day, two days, one hour, two hours, then you're like, oh, okay, I know where is it. <laughs> then you go and you find it. Yes. The red flag is when your memory completely lost the place where you left those things. Yes. When you are not able to recall at all, mm. where did you leave the objects? And this becomes frequent mm -hmm. and with more objects. That's a red flag. Okay. Any change in the mm -hmm. behavior of the person. Mm -hmm. So it, it can be both ways. Someone that was like, you know, serious, kind of sad person, quiet person, mm -hmm. and then become super open, super expressive, mm -hmm. making jokes, making yeah. maybe some inappropriate behaviors. That's a red flag. Mm -hmm. And by the other way, someone that was very extrovert, was very happy, open, mm -hmm. easygoing, and then it becomes or he or she becomes depressed, quiet, mm -hmm. afraid of social contact yes. or, or, or of people, that's also a red flag. Any change in behavior, and this is something that it's usually very neglected. People don't don't yes. see that, that as a symptom. Yes, we usually and focus on the memory part only, not on the behavior. On the memory. Yes. Behavior and personality changes mm -hmm. are a, a very important symptom of Alzheimer's disease and other dementias. Yes. Okay, so what are the latest advancements in uh, Alzheimer research and treatment? Okay, so in the uh, last years, we have seen a huge change in the field because okay. now we have options to treat Alzheimer's disease mm -hmm. in early stages or even pre-symptomatic stages. Mm -hmm. So now we have medications that clear the proteins that accumulate in the brain during Alzheimer's disease. And this is not a cure, but those are medications that can modify the course of the disease. Mm -hmm. And they give people in these stages more time being functional. Mm -hmm. So this is a huge change. Medications are available in the States, in Europe, in some parts of the Middle East and other parts of the world. So this mm -hmm. is a huge change in, in the last three years. Yeah. Another change and something that it's still happening is the way we diagnose Alzheimer's disease. Mm -hmm. So soon we will see a big change before we really light only in clinical diagnosis. Mm -hmm. And if like if we the gold standard was a autopsy, mm -hmm. which <laughs> it was something a little bit extreme extreme. Yes. 
uh, or biomarkers which were very difficult to obtain because we had to do a lot of sure or very advanced neuroimaging that it's not available everywhere. Yes. But so maybe next year, this year actually, we will a uh, blood test okay. that will help us to diagnose with a high percentage of certainty Alzheimer's disease, only with the blood test. Okay, this is good. And the other, the other advance that we've seen in research is that Alzheimer's is preventable. So if we work on these lifestyles that we were talking about yeah. before, up to 45% of the cases of Alzheimer's disease can be prevented. Oh, this is great news. Yeah, <laughs> for me, those are the best news yes, that we course. can prevent it. I have a question that came in my mind right now. Uh, does it run in families? So if my grandfather, my grandmother has Alzheimer, uh, do I have to have Alzheimer when I grow up? No, usually we don't need to worry about of hereditary Alzheimer's because there is one type of Alzheimer's that it's hereditary, mm -hmm. but it's only 1% of the cases of Alzheimer's okay. disease. Mm -hmm. The other one is the one that we call sporadic Alzheimer's and this is not hereditary. Okay. So uh, I have one last question for you, please, doctor. Uh, what are the most important takeaways you want listeners to remember about health, uh, the brain health and Alzheimer disease? Okay. And what tips could you give to our audience? Perfect. So the most important thing is that I want people to know and to absorb and understand that we can prevent this. Yes. And the lifestyle choices that we do in our life matter and they matter a lot and we have to start taking care of our brains when is the day mm -hmm. if you are 20 your time is the day that you need to start changing your lifestyle because that will make your strong yes. that's the only way 45 percent of the cases that's amazing and things that are you know easy at the end mm -hmm. Yes, behavior. Yeah. Repeat. Yeah, it's doable. So it's a nice, healthy diet, sleeping a lot, and being happy. <laughs> and it won't only affect uh, positively our brain health, but our general uh, health as well. So uh, we should really uh, follow always a, he a healthy lifestyle. Yes. Yeah, there's a, a say that we should say to our patients is when it's good for the heart, it's good. Yeah. Yes. And it's good for the soul, for everything. Yeah, for everything. It's for everything that we need. Yes, you're completely right. Uh, Dr. Alejandra, I want to thank you so much for this uh, informative podcast. Uh, I had a really great time with you and hopefully we'll do more and more podcasts about many different topics. So thank you so much for your time. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Have a great day, doctor.